What is the maximum effective range for you and your crossbow? Well, let's talk about that, shall we? I can't make that decision for you, and nothing I'm going to say in this video really is going to make that decision for you. It's just going to give you some food for thought. That's really all this can be. That's all I can do. Not in your circumstances at the moment that it counts when we're sitting there looking at a big buck or any deer or any animal, and you're getting ready to take that shot. I'm not in those circumstances like you will be. But we have to kind of think about these things in advance to make sure we make the best of those situations. You old-time friends of Bungie know that I have been hunting with an older, slower crossbow for more than a decade. Dozens of deer have fallen to the original Bungie VOB. <laughs> yeah, it's been a successful crossbow. It's been very good to me. And I have no doubt in my mind that I could continue to hunt with that older, slower crossbow probably for the rest of my life and keep doing what I'm doing and be successful at it. I don't think that there's any doubt about that whatsoever. One of the reasons I was successful with that crossbow was just because I kept my shots close. I was looking at 10, 15, 20 yard shots more than likely. In fact, I once shot a buck at eight yards. I even joked at one time about how my goal was to take shorter shots. I was trying to beat my record of eight yards and maybe shoot a deer five yards or something like that. It is a lot of fun to be up close and personal with deer. That is something that I really appreciate and enjoy. The problem is I don't think the deer necessarily appreciate and enjoy that as much as I do. Obviously, the closer the deer is to you, the closer any wild animal is to you, the more likely that wild animal is going to realize that you are there. The more likely it is to figure out your presence than get out of there. I was consistently having problems with deer jumping the string. Anything past 30 yards is just too much of a risk. This past year in 2020, I went to Maryland with my daughter, used her crossbow, was successful in shooting a doe at 40 yards. I did hit the shoulder blade, but nonetheless recovered that deer with ease. Now granted, aim a little bit low and you can get the arrow there. And by the time the deer ducks, hopefully they duck into the arrow and you hit the lungs instead of the heart. If you're aiming at the heart, blah, blah, blah. You can do that. I don't like to do that. That is not my preferred practice. And the reason for that is I want the biggest target possible. The lungs on a deer are the biggest target that they can give me. And if the lungs are this big and I'm taking a shot in the middle of those, if my shot happens to be off a little bit, I'll be up in here or I'll be down here, but I'll still be in the middle of that big target. If I'm aiming at the heart down here at the bottom and I'm off a little bit, I could be a little bit low and just simply wound the deer or miss the deer entirely or hit the leg or something like that. I don't want to do that. Really what I want is the bigger target. That's just me. That is my method, my crossbow method. And for that reason, I don't like to play games with my aiming. I don't try to pretend as though I know what the deer is going to do because I don't. Only the deer. The deer doesn't even know at the time that I pull the trigger what the deer is going to do. So really, to me, I aim at the biggest target. So I'm aiming halfway up that deer. That deer ducked a little bit, caught it in the shoulder blade. However, at 350 feet per second, it didn't have much trouble penetrating. Got, uh, you know, 8, 10 inches of penetration there. Really on a smaller doe like that. She's a mature doe, an older doe, but had no trouble taking that deer home. After looking at the results of that, I can tell you that probably going forward, if I do take shots at 40 yards, even with this newer, faster crossbow, I probably am going to be aiming more toward the heart, a little bit lower in the lungs, instead of halfway up the deer. That was a turning point for me in my crossbow evolution, my crossbow story, and how I define a long shot. And really, that's where this video should have started is, what's a long shot? How do you define a long shot? We can't sit here and talk about long shots without knowing what a long shot is. It means different things to different people. If you look at traditional archery, the recurve guys, I'm betting a long shot is 20 yards. 25 is extremely long. I mean, those are long shots when you're shooting 150 to 200 feet per second. Compound bow hunters, 
I see plenty of people saying that their maximum effective range is 40 yards with a compound bow. That seems to be pretty common. However, when I listen to those people describe how they take shots, they are routinely aiming low. In fact, some of them on a 40 yard shot aim below the deer. There's videos here on YouTube where they actually show aiming points where the deer is not at the time that they release an arrow. They're aiming below the deer. That doesn't sit well with me. I don't want to take a shot if I have to anticipate what that deer is going to do, where it's going to be when the arrow gets there. That doesn't sit well with me. I'm not doing that. That is not part of the death by bungee crossbow method. I aim where I want that arrow to go. And that arrow better get there before it changes. That's the goal. Okay. And that's really one of the reasons I've upgraded to a faster crossbow. If you have to do something like that, perhaps you shouldn't even take long shots like that. Perhaps that's too long a shot to be taking in the first place. Or maybe they should be looking at faster equipment, like a crossbow. There are other hunters who take 100-yard shots. If you look at Tim Wells, um, I have a lot of respect for Tim Wells, but I am not Tim Wells. I have said it before. I'm not able to do what he does. Probably most of us are not able to do what he does. He's an exception, right? He's an exceptional bow hunter, far beyond the skill level of what I will ever have. I bet I can shoot a better video than him, though. <laughs> Actually, I'm not even sure of that. There's a video where he shoots a wolf in the middle of the Arctic at 20 below zero or something like that. And he was self-filming the hunt. I mean, this guy's, this guy's a different level. <laughs> Maybe I can edit video better than him. <laughs> now, when we're talking about crossbows, though, we got different numbers, don't we? We have the older, slower crossbows, like Bungie shooting around 305 feet per second on a good day. And then we also have more modern crossbows, like Bungie Jr. shooting 350 feet per second or so, and more modern crossbows yet. The newest addition to the Death by Bungie family Bungie the third shooting around 400 feet per second. It's a Scorpid Deathstalker 420 with a 100 grain broadhead around 420. I put the little rubber things on there and I put a 150 grain broadhead on there. And that's not where it stops. Scorpid has a crossbow that shoots 480 feet per second. And if you look at their website, they refer to that as the world's second fastest crossbow. The fastest crossbow, I think what they're doing is anticipating the release of the Raven 500 shooting 500 feet per second with a 400 grain arrow. Can you believe that? That is a milestone in crossbow technology, in my opinion. And when we talk about these crossbow speeds, when we talk about maximum effective range, obviously the discussion is different if you're shooting 500 feet per second than it is if you're shooting 250. We go back to that video I did with Darren Cummings, 250 feet per second or so, 258. We tested the... the Raven, the crossbow, and uh, it was shooting 413 feet per second. And at 40 yards, it was barely dropping. I'm, I'm confident we would have moved to 50 and it would have still hit that balloon with no issues. It'll make a lot more sense if you go back and watch that video. But the speeds there, if you look at what is accomplished at 250 feet per second and compare that with the 500, even the 400 feet per second, 415 feet per second crossbow that was tested in that video that we talk about in that video, no comparison, no comparison with the 250 or so feet per second bow. Just two different animals. Now, why do I care about maximum effective range? Why do we as crossbow hunters care about maximum effective range? There have been scant few instances in my hunting experience where a longer shot would benefit me an awful lot. However, I will tell you that this year, if you watch the vlogs that we did, we've moved the blinds back a little bit, haven't we? I think that that will make it a little bit more comfortable for deer to come in there. There might be more deer. There might be bucks who show up at the apple tree. Last year, Genevieve and I moved the blind back a mere five yards and she shot her first deer under the hundred year old apple tree. It was a buck. It was also the first buck ever taken under the 100 year old apple tree. Can you believe that? Does it have something to do with moving that blind back only five yards? I don't know. But this year, we're going to move the blind back an additional five yards. I'll be hunting there with the Scorpid Deathstalker 420. The blind is now 35 yards from the trunk of that apple tree. And 
It's a nice clear shot. We've removed all the blades of grass, a nice clear obstruction free shot. We're going to find out. We're going to find out what the deer think about that new maximum effective range. Now, I don't know how long a shot I'd be willing to take on a deer. It's going to depend on so many different circumstances, the weather, it's going to depend on the deer, the, what the, what feedback deer's given me, whether it's paying attention to me, paying attention to something else or not paying attention to anything. All three different scenarios call for different distances of shots, I believe. Depends on how confident I am with my level of accuracy and how much coffee I had that day and whether I'm jittery or not. Depends on a lot of things now in all seriousness, doesn't it? It really does. Recently this summer, I did have a chance to break out the Scorpid Death Stalker, the first ever shot taken on an animal with that, successful at 50 yards on a woodchuck, 50 yards. And I got to tell you, the broadhead went exactly where I asked it to go. It went exactly where I wanted it to go. It was a perfect shot. That same shot would have killed a deer that was not alert. Now, you're thinking, well, woodchucks don't move out of the way. Woodchucks don't duck the string the way that deer do. And maybe there's some truth to that. I mean, they're smaller animals. They're sitting right on the ground. However, Genevieve had taken a shot just before that, only days earlier, jumped the string at 40 yards. She's shooting around 350 feet per second. And does that make the difference? I don't know. The maximum effective range on a 350 feet per second or so crossbow is probably going to be different from the maximum effective range of a 400 feet per second crossbow. That just makes sense. When I spoke with Darren Cummings, he did give us a rule of thumb, something he thinks is probably a pretty safe rule, a pretty safe way of thinking about it. Take your, your bow speed and its feet per second and divide that by 10. That's about how many yards you'll be able to shoot and the amount of time it would take that deer to drop four, about four inches. And that makes sense to me too. That's a great place to start in determining your maximum effective range. One thing that I wanna bring up that I brought up in the past is what I joked about was the cone of uncertainty, right? When they predict weather, as you look at the map, they'll always have this cone of uncertainty. Where is the hurricane gonna go? Where is it gonna hit land? When they look at where that hurricane is right now, it's pretty easy to tell what's going to happen immediately after that. But when they start to stretch that out over distance, it becomes more difficult to tell exactly where that hurricane is going to go. Is it going to go to the left? Is it going to go to the right, to the north or to the south? What have you? I joked about that years ago during hurricane season and how it applied to arrows. And I think there's some truth to that. The farther out you go, regardless of crossbow speeds, whether you're using more modern speeds or not, the more that can go wrong. If there's something that's not quite sighted in right on your crossbow, that's going to show over a 50 yard shot, whereas it might not show at 20 yards. One thing that I learned with the original bungee was that shooting at 50 yards made shooting at 20 yards a lot easier. I got pretty comfortable shooting at 50 yards, but there is still a lot that can go wrong over that 50 yards. If you're in a different area where you haven't prepped it for your hunting scenario, you don't know if there's branches in the way or grass in the way. The older I get, the less my eyes can distinguish all of that grass. When I hunt on my old homestead there, my shooting lanes are nice and clear. There's no branches between me and whatever deer I'm gonna be shooting at, that's for sure. If you're hunting on public land, you're in a different setup every time. Maybe you don't know whether there's brush there. That's gonna factor into what your maximum effective range is. As you expand your range, as you extend your range, as you make it a longer shot, there's more arrow drop. And I don't care how fast your crossbow shoots, arrows drop. There isn't a flat shooting crossbow out there. However, some of them, especially these newer ones, shoot a lot flatter than the older ones, don't they? They certainly do. There's a lot more of a flat trajectory with a modern crossbow. That is one of the advantages of modern crossbows. We're shooting rockets, not rainbows. <laughs> this is a good spot to point out an answer to a question I get all the time. A lot of people ask, at these longer distances, is there still enough energy, still enough momentum to kill an animal anyway? The answer to that with most modern crossbows is yes. At any reasonable distance, there's plenty of momentum left over. These crossbows are shooting with way more energy than older forms of archery equipment. It 
comes back to knowing your equipment. There is no substitute for spending some time with that equipment and becoming very familiar with it. Run those tests and run those numbers yourself and see how you make out. Now you might be wondering, man, if I stretch my shots out long enough and take a long enough shot, maybe the deer won't react to it. Maybe the deer won't even hear the bow go off. I did have a chance to talk to Darren Cummings about exactly that question. In terms of how far would you have to shoot before you, before the the volume, the uh, how how loud it is, isn't something that's going to scare the deer. I mean, I, it probably comes down to the time of the year, how pressured the deer are. But let's just say what's the the distance, and especially like with a crossbow, they're pretty loud. <laughs> I think you're getting out to a distance where it would be so difficult just to make that shot on an animal that could move. You know, it could take a next step, and that that travel time. Uh, a lot of people don't realize how much travel time uh, there is when an arrow or a bolt is flying. Uh, actually, just as a, a kind of a sidebar and something else that uh, your viewers might want to hear. So I just did some simple calculations of a deer moving at about two miles per hour, which is a pretty normal walking pace. And if that deer was at 30 yards and you shot to hit, you know, kind of perfect dead center where you would normally aim, by the time that that arrow gets there, the distance it would have traveled would be about uh, six to eight inches, which means you'd be punching the liver or the guts. I cannot tell you what your maximum effective range is. In the older video, I tried to tell everybody, look, 30 yards is the farthest you could shoot. If you limit your shots to 30 yards, you will be happy with the results. You, there's no question about that. There is no question that shorter is better, really. If you can make a 20 yard shot and set up a 20 yard shot, the likelihood of success is much greater than a 30 yard shot. I don't care what equipment it is. The farther out you go, certainly the risks increase. They certainly do. However, with a more modern crossbow, more modern equipment, I don't think those risks increase as much as they used to. What's my maximum effective range? Don't walk away from this video thinking that my maximum effective range, the death by bungee is now a 100 yard shot crossbow channel on you. That's not what this is, not at all. 70 yard shots? No, no, nothing of the sort. In fact, if you've been watching Death by Bungie, you know that Bungie the third is using the Excalibur scope that I took off the OB. That scope only goes out to 60 yards. And I really like that scope. I really do. One of the reasons I like that scope is it's got really good low light performance. It's also illuminated. But the big thing I like about that is I get older, I don't wear glasses or anything, but I can see really well in that scope because it lets in more light. That's helpful for me even during the day. But when you have those reticles set up and only 60 yards, there's only a handful of reticles in there. It's a lot easier for me to use a scope like that than it is one like the scopes on the Raven where there's like 11 reticles. That scope, I couldn't even tell 20 from 30 in that scope. And I had to, I really was uncomfortable shooting it. I would get used to that. I understand it. I'm not knocking those scopes, but they're just not for me. I really do like this scope and I'm going to, for the time being at least, continue to use it. The reticles only go out to 60 yards. My backyard only goes out to 60 yards, so I don't see me taking shots longer than 60 yards. The 50-yard shot on a woodchuck handled with no problem. Can I say that that's my maximum effective range now? Well, it kind of is because I killed a woodchuck at 50 yards, so it was effective. That's about as maximum effective as you can be is killing the woodchuck at 50 yards. I really don't see me doing that on a deer, and I'm not setting up my shots in advance. That hasn't changed. That part of my crossbow strategy, my method has not changed in that I'm still setting up shots that are shorter than that. Realistic shots. So really, shorter shots are still better. It's just that shorter means one thing to me and might mean something different to someone else. I hope you, as a friend of Bungie, only take good shots. Until next time, all hail Bungie! <laughs>